It is time for a celebration. Everybody, come on in and sit down somewhere. Get you a snack and have a seat and get comfortable. We uh, we were very dominant in preseason three, and of course, we got to break that down. Now, this video may be a little more lengthy because, hey, man, Taco and Dorrance and Malik came out the gate with their D-line play, so this was going to be a D-line video, but damn, the D-line was dominant all four quarters, so we're going to get some of the some of the younger guys in there. We're going to talk about Jelks and, and Kerry Hyder and Soto and all those guys today Tristan Hill got some work everybody got a piece um so that's going to be fun to break this down so if you're on your lunch break uh you in class not paying attention to stuff hey man come on in come on in it's time to celebrate this cowboy W um so preseason when they say it doesn't matter it doesn't matter from uh hey wins and losses I'm trying to make the playoffs like 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 this like this ain't gonna help us get to the Super Bowl no but it's very helpful in our D line evaluation because we're gonna have to cut a lot of guys next week, and I might cry a river over a few of them. But hey, man, it's part of the game, and we need these games to kind of open things up. Now, this first play, what I noticed about it, what I really liked about it, I think this is gonna be something that's really gonna be um, that's gonna happen often in the regular season. Like we're we're complimenting each other on defense. Good coverage is gonna bring us sacks. Also, great quarterback pressure is going to bring us interceptions we'll talk about that later on in a second so what i saw from here at this point here right what i saw was by the time deshaun watson drive back and he went through his play actions or whatever uh both flats were covered especially at this point here both flats were covered we had the check down guy here i know there's a guy in the slot running deep that's okay we pass him along to the free safety here he's safe then you got deandre hopkins right there but he's gonna get covered up by your two superstar linebackers so deshaun watson really got to make a decision he should hit his check down guy here but i always said ever since he was in clemson if deshaun watson misses one read you got 10 seconds to sack him right and let's start from the beginning this is pretty much what happens here this is the first taco sack and we're gonna run this play um taco didn't immediately get the you know get the whooping off the line of scrimmage but because the coverage was so good it gave taco an opportunity to you know free himself up now he's gonna get to this point work his way back inside spin back outside i don't know who number 70 is but I'm willing to do a full length film session to how good of a player 70 is just to find out uh, if Taco's getting better or if 70's ankle was hurting or something. I don't know. I would love to figure that out, but let's keep watching. We got plenty more film to get into. I just thought it was so funny that we were like three plays in and they just took Watson ass out of there. Like that was just so appropriate. But anyway, check out this play. I noticed that they um they really caught on to how the d-line was like really whooping folk and i think this is a good way to beat deshaun watson right like i've never been a defensive coach in my life i've coached a lot of offense but if i'm gonna beat deshaun watson i would like to get pressure around them so they can lead tight ends into block they got a nasty ace ace formation right here ace is two tight ends one on this side one over there and both tight ends are just in blocking for deshaun watson and what that does it it lessens the the receiving options for deshaun so what's going to happen is we got one guy here one guy there and there's one more option that's going to be the check down running back right here deshaun only got three people to throw to Deshaun ain't great there Deshaun's great where he got a lot of options and he could just find an open guy after creating some more time and in the pocket scrambling around but if he only got three receiving options and we're guarding the sticks then we're putting Watson in a bad situation which which gives us more time to get sacks on him this is our second taco sack and it just seemed like taco just gonna whoop up on this tight end that's supposed to be that's Davenport Okay, I'm going to look up Davenport later. Uh, this tight end is supposed to be here helping Davenport, but Davenport just seemed to pass him along because uh, he ain't want no piece of Taco Charlton, okay? This is what's interesting here, and I'm going to move on to the next play after this. This is what's interesting. Like, I didn't think about it till the game was over, but, like, that's our third string defensive ends out there tearing stuff up you know a previous week some cowboy naysayers were like hey man that's just you know it's just preseason these are these are backups well this is the first string texans you know what i mean versus our third string defensive ends because tyrone and d law is probably the first team randy and uh robert quinn would probably be, be like you know like a second wave of guys right this taco endurance <laughs> this taco endurance making deshaun watson run for his life like this i like it 
So I got a couple puzzle pieces to look at in this play. It's a lot of things going on. Um, Taco's going to be the right defensive end. He's going to be right there. So once we get that going, you'll know where he's at. But um, he's probably found a little safe haven at, at, at right defensive end. Even though he's built for left and in the perfect world, we want him to play left. He gets his production from the right side or whatever. But um, one thing I noticed about this, though, just moving on, I didn't want to be the guy that just hopped on the internet and be like, uh-oh. Taco ready, y'all. Let's push somebody off a bridge to save him. Because some people did ask me, like, is Taco safe now, Vach? I'm like, I don't know yet. Because Taco got his sacks from these elongated pocket sits, right? Um, and I know every week is not going to be Watson missing a read. So now we got 10 seconds to go get him. Or um, uh, insert what's his face, obscure first name, Webb. Whoever the hell is playing quarterback right now, we're not we're not gonna always have him. Some of these quarterbacks that we go up against are gonna get rid of the ball quick. They're gonna be guys that can move around, that can you know make things happen on the go. So I would like to see Taco get more defined sacks opposed to um, uh, what's his face Jenkins Webb here, uh, just just giving us a sack and slowing down when he gets to Taco's side, right? Um, but I think this is another uh, this is another example of what happens when we're just covering so well. Shouts out to our DBs. We're just covering so well that we have no other choice uh, but to put hands on quarterback. One last piece I wanted to show y'all. Take a look at take a look at Kerry Hyder. Everybody talking about Taco Charlton because he made the first few plays. He probably got the most um, the most stat box numbers or whatever. But Kerry Hyder got more got more quarterback pressures and hits than anybody and this is me looking at all the stats this is me looking through all the all the the plays i didn't want to drop this on sunday because i really wanted to you know take a look at this thing but carrie Hyder is really whooping people he's the left defensive end here and he's really whooping these young men and i'm gonna show you some more some more carrie Hyder later he only ended up with one sack i believe i'll double check my notes on that he ended up with one sack in the numbers but he got like three quarterback hits which is important because let me see did his pressure cause taco to yeah, so his pressure drew out um uh what's his name Samson Jenkins Webb. Uh, he flushed him out so Taco could actually finish the sack. So I think Kerry Hyder's fighting, fighting, you know, fighting his spot as well. Plus he can uh, bump inside and play and play uh play you know three ticks. So that's interesting to keep our eyes on moving forward. Let's keep watching. Even though Taco got sacks, in my opinion, this is his best play. Take a look at him. He's the right defensive end. He's going to come off the ball. He's going to read this ugly-looking screen. He's going to stop, get hands up, and bat the ball. That's the best Taco play I've seen here because it actually shows football intelligence. It shows awareness. Um, it gives you a good idea of this this length that he has, this actual body that he has to, to get up and, and, and do things like this. You know what I mean? That's most impressive chat box hashtag that's most impressive like sure you can get sacks if the if the quarterback's holding the ball for seven seconds but give me some of this this is what's going to help you in a real life game reading the screen up oh, good job taco there that's that's where i applaud you at good job there we're taking a look at dorrance armstrong now he's 92 he's going to be the left defensive end what i like about dorrance is if Taco comes on the field and can't play nothing but right right in, then hey Dorrance, we need you at left. He can play left. Uh, but if like D Law goes out there or Tyron Crawford goes out there, like those guys are clearly left defensive ends or whatever, then hey Dorrance, we need you to play right. Then Dorrance will just go play right. I like that versatility from him. But uh, he's on the left side right here. What I got from this play. Sure, he kind of beat this dude in front of him, which was a tight end. He ended up going on breaks, but I like the effort here, man. I um, early in the season or early in the off season, I talked about uh, there was this uh, this uh, phrase that I use: D line DNA. All these guys that we have, they got the same D line DNA. That's another hashtag for the uh, comment section. There, we're all guys that get up field and give effort. High effort guys. Taco, look, he may be looking slow, but he running. Who is this? Ninety six. That's Malik. He out there running. Antoine Woods, he out there running. I like that D line DNA, man. Go, go, go out there and get you a tackle. Go out there and give us some high effort. Even if you don't beat your guy now, you might beat him just keeping your feet moving and running. Good job from Rob Marinelli. <laughs> hey man, let me tell you something. And there's no way I can say this without making it sound like I'm hating on Taco, right? Take a look at Dorrance right here, bro. Dorrance, th these are the kind of sacks that I want from Taco, not just the 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 long ball sacks. But look at Dorrance. <laughs> That's how you beat a guy, man. 
Uh, he's gonna come off the ball. Some pretty good ball get off right here. I like it. And we're gonna see Dorrance defeat the outside hand, right? Just pretty easy standard play. Dorrance is gonna defeat the outside hand. And he's gonna sack um uh Roscoe Jenkins Webb here. Oh goodness, his helmet came off. He, and who is this that got in on this? Joe Jackson even got some. Shouts out to Joe Jackson. Let's see him from the beginning. He's 56. Let's see. Joe Jackson's probably at the other defensive end. Yes, Joe is at the right. Let's see what Joe Jackson did. Let's run this play. Uh okay, Joe kind of hung in there. Joe kind of hung in there. This was mostly 72 being terrible, but hey man, Joe Jackson got some and Doran set it up for him. So I thought that was fantastic. Shouts out to everybody watching right now because I think everybody that tunes into my channel, um, I think they're a higher tier of cowboy fan in terms of football intelligence, in terms of how their uh how their emotional reactions are. Um and I want to say for 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 everybody i think i can speak for everybody and say that nobody wanted wanted miller to get hurt right here you know what i mean um he tore his acl that's that's not a good thing we're not happy about that uh there are some trash cowboy fans that like cheer for things like that but um i don't think that we have any of those you know people watching right now because we're a different breed of cowboy fan we are the 20 percent but um, taking his injury away from it, which was terrible. Malik Collins made a damn good play right here. He's going to be the uh, three-tech down bottom here. He's kind of shaded in a little bit. He's kind of head up on that guard almost, uh, but he's still in the outside shoulder enough to make him three, and he and he's cocked a little bit, so he's really trying to get off the football. Whenever you see a D-line cocked at an angle, um, um, Antoine does it a lot where he's where he's in a gap and he's really shaded over that center and he's and he's turned a little bit. He's really trying to trying to um, get off the football and, and um, push that angle. But we see Collins here. We're just gonna see Collins get off the ball and just win with quickness. That's what I like because we've seen Malik win with power. We know he's a he's a big, thick, powerful dude. But if he just comes off the ball quick enough and just cross your face like seventy, I really got to look into this Davenport guy. Um, um 70 like he, he he just didn't have enough to to cross his face this wasn't a situation where 70 just got beat with a with a nasty bull rush we just speeded you to the inside i know i just made up a word y'all don't make fun of me we just speeded you to the inside and um good play from malik collins right there speedy recovery for um lamar miller <laughs> hey man speaking of which man take a look at your rookie bro take a look at your second round pick tristan hill why don't you take a look at your boy he's lined up in three tech right here and he's just gonna beat him with some get off right here man what's up with these tackles that can't reach our our three techs man like y'all y'all supposed to be tackles y'all supposed to be athletes y'all supposed to have the best movement on the offensive line why you can't block my young rookie tristan hill here is the ball get off too good for you i'll tell you what happened Tristan came off the ball and you see this first shock right here, like this first boom, like that first little pop right there. And Tristan is learning. Um, he's learning how to uh, this is a technique. I, and I know Rod teaches it because I see it like like in all these guys. I see him do it. Uh, th this is simply Tristan getting small, get slim, get skinny. You may hear him hear uh, one of these coaches or football people say get skinny. Don't don't give this tackle the full surface to to block you if you turn dip your shoulder get and get slim then this tackle all he can do is put hands one hand on your inside shoulder right you can't simply block tristan hill with one hand on his inside shoulder so what tristan's gonna do is he's gonna take you all the way to the tackle you can't stop him here because you don't have any leverage so um our biggest knock on Tristan is that he got all the physical gifts. He got the the ball get off, the quickness, speed. He's got some power to him. We just need him to learn how to play football. And I'm, I promise you, Papa Rod told him, hey, man, when you get in a situation like this, you read the zone going away from you and your backside, get skinny. Get skinny, dip a shoulder in there to make your surface smaller. I'm sure Rod Marinelli taught him that. And we see Tristan Hill using that. My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man.
A couple things I see here I want to uh, talk about. I'm going to talk about two players. Uh, let's talk about Tristan first, though, um, because he is my son, him and Tony. Well, actually, Tristan my son. Tony's my cousin. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, Tristan here. A couple things that I see technique-wise from him, right? And we just talked about him getting better at these technique things, right? First of all, Tristan's going to come off the ball. I like the fact that he's using his hands, okay? A nice punch to the inside, extension, giving himself a little bit of room to navigate. As D linemen, we can't navigate when it's offensive linemen right on top of us being bigger and just being stronger than us, right? We got to create a little bit of space. Tristan is going to create space um, with the extension of the hands. Then he's going to work. Watch this. He's going to work to the outside to get this tackle to commit a little bit. And you see that tackle's base getting wide right there. Right there, you see that that tackle's base getting wide and he's leaning to the outside because Tristan gave him that bit of pressure from the outside. Then he's gonna spin back inside and clear with that right hand. Just clear the hands with that right hand. I love it. Let's watch it in fast motion one more time. Mm -mm. And, uh, but the the star on this play was Christian Covington. Hey man, Christian Covington ain't just going to lay down and let Antoine Woods just get all the reps out here. Christian Covington want to get a sack on his, <laughs> he want to get a sack on his team, man, on his former team. Uh, I think, um, even though Christian Covington has been relatively quiet, I just think that's because the, the media and guys like law nation and, 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 um, other guys that go to Cowboys camp, but they only want to see quarterbacks and receivers and running backs. Yes. I'm throwing shade at you space cowboy people like that. Uh, they only want to see, uh, the little guys go out there and run. I think if we had an opportunity to, to see more O line D line play, I think we would see a lot more of Christian Covington whooping people. Right. So, um, I think he's definitely going to make the team him and Antoine Woods are going to be rotating that, um, that one tech Daniel Jones got to fight for his right to party at some point, but, um, good play there by, uh, both of our interior guys. Here's another example of, of Kerry Hyder putting in work, but it's not going to be able to show up in the box score. I don't think you get, you get, uh, you get numbers for this, but he's going to be the left defensive end. Watch this stunt up top right here. Kerry Hyder up top. Let's run it. Watch this stunt. He's going to let 93, uh, I forget who that is. That Daniel Jones, I guess. I don't know. 93. He's going to let him uh, be the anchor. Then Kerry Hyder is going to come over the top. Now, Kerry Hyder didn't get a sack on um, uh, Jeffrey Aloysius, whatever his name, Webb is. Um, he didn't get the sack here, but that is good pressure. <laughs> that is a good qualified quarterback hit. Kerry Hyder got a lot of those. And um, I would rather have that guy that, uh, that, that, that gets you constant pressure, that gets you, you know, constant quarterback hits. And this is the actual sack where Kerry Hyder gets on the board. Just a very angry pass rush by Kerry Hyder. Oh my God. Look, 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 look at your boy, man. Sacking uh Bill Clinton Webb here. Just oh man. These are the sacks I want to see, man. Those those under four second sacks. These are the ones I want to see. Let's see how how he did it. He came off the ball. What do you do? Just, just, just ass whoop. Just he, he didn't control nobody's hands. <laughs> he ain't even bend really well. But if you look at um at my film session that I dropped on him when he was uh pass rushing with the uh with the Lions, Kerry Hyder was a very get it done pass rush. He didn't have the the best most crisp technique in the world. Uh, I think he did the uh, the uh, Marinelli hop step right here that he been teaching. Let me see. Yeah, he kind of somewhat pulled off the hop step defeat outside hand move so yeah i was wrong there um but we see a lot more of our d-line doing it uh, you know d-law does it taco did it a few times randy definitely has gotten good at it and we see um um robert quinn did it also and uh we just see carrie Hyder there with the uh with the hop slap <clears throat> and this is the last sack from carrie Hyder. he's lined up at the at the left defensive end um we know that he's big and powerful enough to work on the inside so um you know can you know like should we uh foresee him lining up at guard and uh, not at guard lining up at tackle and whooping some guards sure i see that in his future um even though he's played mostly d end i think he can make a, he can he can make this roster from being able to you know play both inside and out and you know we absolutely need more inside and, and outside guys but hey man you know you want to ask me man some 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 people will say taco had the biggest day carry Hyder definitely had the bigger day to me I know a lot of people got into the backfield here, um, but take a look at Jalen Jokes over there. He's going to be at the left defensive end. Watch him just come off the ball and just create havoc immediately. 
My goodness, Jalen Jones don't even look, man. Like he ain't even use a setup move right here. He he just kind of came off the ball and just strength his way into stopping the run running the backfield, man. I, I didn't know if Jalen Jones was gonna make this team at first. I didn't know it because it was so it was so much defensive end talent on this team. I just didn't know if I could just irresponsibly put him there. You know what I mean? But um, I just I don't think Jalen makes it in practice squad, man. Because if if you look at the guy that got all the numbers in preseason, it's Jalen. Jalen just got sacks and tackles all up and down this uh, this uh, preseason. So I don't even think we're hiding him. And I'd be really upset if we lost him. But um, good play from Jalen Jones. Let's see another one. And another play in the run game, Jalen Jokes at left defensive end right there, just taking this dude lunch money. They ain't been able to block him all night. Um, Jalen Jokes just crossing face again with his with his quickness. We've seen J uh, Jalen Jokes be strong. Now let's see uh, Jalen Jokes be a little quick, cross face, make the tackle. <laughs> hey, time out. Look at Jalen Jokes. Hey, time out. Look at your boy Jalen Jokes, love defensive end. Watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. <laughs> Look at him defeat the outside hands. And look, Jalen even even got a little bend to him, right? We always knew Jalen was a was a physical guy, physical specimen. Like we knew he had the size, the the speed, quickness, ball get off or whatever. He just had to learn how to play D line, right? Um, it seems like he's winning with physical gifts. Now, what happens when he plays a a better brand of tackle? You know what I mean? I don't know, but he whooping up on this great value kid right now. Just wanted to let you know he's whooping up on that guy. But, you know, if we had to put him up against somebody that can play, play, play for real, for real, I don't know how that would go. Maybe he would have more need for technique. But Jalen Jones is just whooping these kids off the rip, man. I got any other plays? That's it. Uh... That's it, man. Hey, this was uh, this was a bit longer. I don't know how long it's going to be after I edit it out, but some people were asking for longer videos. And even if you weren't somebody, if you wasn't someone, if you weren't someone, were not someone that asked for longer videos, I mean, hey, this video had to be longer. It had to be because I wanted to really showcase the entire D-line all up and down this offseason. I've been talking about um, how much better the D-line depth is, the D-line competition is, and you know, it'll just be irresponsible of me to say that and not show how deep the D-line depth is. You know what I mean? With that being said, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Salute to the Patreon people. Shouts out to the merch gang, everybody that has bought a shirt. Um, shouts out to AffordableSticks.com, all of our sponsors, everybody that's holding it down for us, and the Doski Wolski. Y'all follow me on Twitter, V O C H L O M B A R D I. Don't forget when the regular season starts, I'll be doing post game shows after the game, and I'll be doing the morning after shows the day after that. So y'all tune in. I'm gonna. I'm very excited for those live streams. Y'all, uh, y'all, uh, you know, hang around and, and be visible for that. Okay, um, y'all probably done with your lunch break now. You probably uh, your class is probably over. Y'all going somewhere and you have a great day. And salute, man. Peace. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just one dollar a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M and M's, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's Patreon.com/slash Vach Lombardi. I appreciate the support, Doski Woski. Salute.